so far we've been pessimistic that we may have crashes. But hopefully, crashes are not something that happen very often. And if crashes don't happen that often, crash recovery is not that important. But on the other hand, if crashes are not happening, but the system is progressing along, then what is going to happen is that we're going to create lots of log records on the disk as the system is making forward progress. So we have external data segments, which of course we need, because that is where the persistent objects are actually contained. But we're also creating these redo log records that are reflections of changes that we have made to the in-memory versions of these persistent data structures. Eventually, we want these redo logs that represent changes to the external data segment to be applied to the external data segments. Now, the only time we're going to do that is when a crash happens. That's being very pessimistic. Also, we may end up clogging the disk with a number of redo log records. We've seen the need for log truncation in the distributed shared memory systems as well. In the case of DSM, those logs were clogging physical memory. In the case of LRVM, these logs are clogging the disk space. Regardless, these are unnecessary overhead in terms of space and clutter. And also, if a particular application needs to map an external data segment, then we have to know whether that data segment is up to date or not. And that depends on whether there are some redo logs pending to be applied to those external data segments. So all of these things suggest that what we need to do is truncate the log periodically. What exactly is truncating the log? It means that we want to read the logs from the disk and apply them to the external data segments and get rid of them. Now this sounds exactly like what I described to you happens when we do recovery from a crash. Therefore, for log truncation, simply apply crash recovery algorithm. So anytime the system, meaning the LRVM runtime, decides that it is time to do some cleanup, what it is going to do is it's going to go and pick some logs to clean, bring those logs into memory, read the redo log records, apply them to the appropriate data segment, and throw away the log records. So that's what log truncation is all about. Of course, we don't want to stop the world in order to do this log truncation. So what we want to do is we want to do the log truncation in parallel with forward processing by the application. And the way LRVM allows that to happen is it splits the log record into epochs. It says this is a portion of the log record that I've chosen to clean up. And this is a truncation epoch. And so this is the part that I'm going to use to read from the disk and apply to the external data segment. And in parallel with that, I'm going to allow the application to make changes. This is the current epoch where the application is making changes to the log record. And this is a new record which is not yet being used. So the idea is that we are allowing RVM to do its work in terms of log truncation by reading a portion of this log, which is a truncation epoch portion of the log, and applying to the external data segments. And in parallel with that, we're also allowing the application to make forward progress by writing new log records to the current epoch. So the crash recovery algorithm is being applied to the part of the log that is in this truncation epoch while allowing forward processing to the part of the log which is the current epoch that the server is working on. The biggest challenge in implementing LRVM is the log truncation code, because there's so much coordination that is needed between what the LRVM runtime has to do and what the application may be doing in terms of morphing the current log segment. You need the log segment for recovery, but it is also an overhead when there are no crashes. And they take up a lot of disk space and put extra burden on mapping an external data segment to the subsystem that wants to use it. So managing the logs, truncating the log as efficiently as possible is one of the hairiest problems, according to the authors of this paper, in implementing LRVM, because it directly has a consequence on the performance of LRVM. And in fact, the bulk of the heavy lifting that is done in implementing LRVM runtime and make it really lightweight and efficient goes in doing this log truncation efficiently. Now, what I described to you here is one course level of log truncation where 
we are taking the redo logs and applying it. A more finer grain way of implementing log truncation would be to look at in-memory copy of the log segment also and trying to make sure that we apply it to the external data segments so that we don't even incur the cost of writing a disk version of the redo log. That is even more complicated, and I welcome you to read details of that in the paper.